moving ever downward into the human body, we're going to take a look at the trachea and the bronchi. The trachea, you might have heard called the windpipe. In fact, in previous videos, I think I even referred to it as the windpipe because this is where the air is going to be going up and down. All right, so we have the trachea, otherwise known as the windpipe. It's going to begin below the cricoid cartilage like we discussed in the previous video. It has between 15 to 20 C-shaped cartilaginous rings with an opening posteriorly for esophageal expansion. Uh, what we mean by this is in the front you have this cartilage that's C-shaped. So it has this gap here in the back. Laying right next to the trachea is the esophagus. They're laying right next to each other. They are bosom buddies. They are in contact. And what has to happen is when you swallow food, so let's say that you're having lunch or breakfast or dinner or whatever, you're eating. When you swallow that food, when you swallow that bolus of food, it's going to go down through the esophagus. As it's moving down, it's pushing the trachea out of the way. So it kind of pushes it in as the food comes down. And so that's why the C shapes are there. It allows the esophagus to push the trachea out of the way or forward as it's bringing the food down. The trachea will bifurcate, fancy word for split, into a right and a left main bronchi around the area of your sternal angle. So your sternum, right around your sternal angle, you're going to have the bifurcation. It's going to split left and right. At the bifurcation is something called the, the carina. This is a very sensitive spot, by the way. If something gets down there that shouldn't get down there, you will cough very violently. It's kind of a last ditch effort to get something out where it shouldn't be. It's then going to split into a left and right main bronchi. You have something called the mucociliary escalator. Don't try to say that fast. What happens here is dirt and other icky stuff, dust, nah, icky, gross stuff, okay, just gross stuff in general, can get into your respiratory tract. And along down this windpipe, okay, along down this trachea, you have mucus. Mucus is there to trap the foreign particles. We want to keep the respiratory tract sterile. And so the mucus is going to attempt to collect and trap stuff that shouldn't be there, dust, like I said, dirt, things like that. Then what winds up happening is through cilia, and you should have learned this to the histology section, cilia are going to constantly move this mucus up, mucus up, mucus up, mucus up. And where we have the, the common area, where we have the windpipe and the food pipe coming together, okay, where we have the trachea and the esophagus coming together right there by the cartilages, okay, by the epiglottis, you are going to swallow and you're swallowing constantly and you may not even be aware of it. What you're doing is you're taking that junk out of the respiratory system, swallowing it and putting it down the digestive system where the body can then dissolve and eat it and destroy it and basically handle the icky stuff. Yeah, I know, not a pleasant thought that you're constantly hacking up mucus, not even aware of it and you're swallowing it, but hey, we're alive. This is one of the reasons how we survive. Moving on to something more pleasant and that would be the bronchi. The trachea will divide into the left and right principal bronchi at the carina, like we just said. The principal bronchi will then divide into secondary or lobar bronchi, then subdivide even further into tertiary bronchi or segmental bronchi. So they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. If you've ever seen like an oak tree, you got the big trunk and then it goes up and it branches off into big branches and then smaller branches and smaller branches and smaller branches. Now flip that upside down and you have an idea of what's happening inside of our lungs with the bronchi. The right main bronchi is shorter, wider, and more vertical than the left main bronchi. It has three lobar bronchi divided into 10 segmental bronchi. The left main bronchi is longer, narrower, and more horizontal than the right. This one has two lobar bronchi that will divide into eight segmental bronchi. Bronchopulmonary segments. One of the things that I use to describe this is if you've ever had pull-apart cake. Um, if you've never seen pull-apart cake, what it is is it's like little chunks of cake 
like little balls of cake that are put together to form a bigger cake. And you can take one of the little balls of cake off and eat it and pull parts, uh, pull it apart. That's why it's called a pull apart cake. Well, your lungs are pull apart. You have what we call bronchopulmonary segments. These are functional units of the lungs. They all have their own blood supply. They are wrapped in their own connective tissue. And God forbid, if you ever need to have part of your lung removed, so let's say due to lung cancer, they're going to remove it by these pull apart pieces, the bronchopulmonary segments. So let's take a look at the official explanation. The tertiary or segmental bronchi go to supply an independent section within the lungs called that bronchopulmonary segment. Each segment is encased with connective tissue with its own blood supply. In the event the lung tissue has to be removed, they will be removed by these segments. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the lungs.